Hey guys, we are at Mice 2023 on the Espresso Company Australia stand. I'm here with Zach, our head roaster, and Gavin. He's going to show us the Alio Bullet. So the Alio Bullet is our sample roaster. We've had this for, how long have we had the Alio Bullet? For? Just over six months now. Six months. This roaster was something that we introduced so that we could really replicate uh, on our IMF roaster, some of the smaller sample roasts that we wanted to taste, get great profiles out of our coffees. Definitely. Um, today we're just going to learn a bit more about software, how it works, what are the, the main features and benefits that we've found across, across this little roaster. So, mate, so far, how's mice been for you? It's been great. Um, we've had a lot of interest over here on our, this is our induction bar. So we've yeah. got uh, the bullet, obviously run by induction, and uh, we've got some coffee machines and, uh, and milk solutions that uh, is also run in, on induction, so it's a bit of a unique bar. So it's uh, attracting a bit of attention, which is. So, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, the bullet, induction. Yeah, cool. It's, um, it's, like I said, pretty unique. Not, uh, not many, uh, well, not that I know, no other roasters are run by induction. So, um, it's, if uh, not many people know, it's um, very similar to gas operation in the, in the sense of um, uh, its responsiveness and, uh, and power and efficiency. So it's even more efficient than gas, to be honest. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you said uh, software, so let's, let's get Yeah, you want to dive into the software? Yeah, well, yeah, why not? Should we check the roast on? Let's yeah. check the roast on. Yeah. yeah. Gab's going to so walk us through a roast. Yeah. Exactly. While you set that up, just for a second, Zach, yeah. do you want to give us a two second rundown of, I guess, how you've been using it? Sure, sure. Uh, I found the bullet to be uh, super handy. Seeing as we run a, a 30 kilo IMF, it, it gives us the ability to do a lot, have a lot more play time. We can put in those, um, those origins and see what we want out of those without, you know, that, that whole trial and error in the IMF. Sure. Um, I think that's important for us, being able to profile those before we go into production. Yeah. We don't want to do it during production. Yeah. Um, and this gives us the ability to do up to a kilo at a time. No other sample roaster or anything of this size can do that volume. Yeah. So that, that, that was a, a huge selling point for us. Sure. Uh, also the software was amazing, having um, the ability to log on to something like Roast World and see what everybody else is roasting, yeah. download recipes um, from reputable roasters sure. uh, is, is super important, you know. Any any sort of help from the community or other reputable roasters is, is always welcome. Definitely. So, Very cool. That's, yeah, that's the bonus part about this is um, a lot of roasters are pretty protective of their IP and, and, yeah. their, and their roast profiles and, and what makes them unique. Um, the good thing about the Alio is a lot of people, it's, it's home roasters, it's enthusiasts, it's also, you know, coffee roasters like yourselves, um, but the, the sharing is there, the community is there, the, the ability to learn from each other and, uh, and just share any, um, any recipes, any, um, any ways of doing things differently, any, any setups, you know, setups of your bullet and your um, exhausting systems, your, um, where you're roasting, how you're roasting, um, it's just, it's all there and everyone's, everyone's there to help each other any, if there are any troubles or any, you know, troubleshooting. Um, I think that's probably one of the best things about it, it's the community of the, um, the ALO. Definitely, um, I agree. I, it's, it's super helpful for people just getting started. Um, and if you're a home roaster, being able to take this home and get all the information and support that you need from not only your, your retailer or supplier, but online through that Roast World portal, download those recipes uh, and, you know, it, it's really helpful. Yeah, and so one of the, one of the cool features is uh, the playback function, which is what <laughs> we're using now in the software. So um, basically it's just an automated um, function, it'll, it'll take your one of the previous recipes that you've done, it takes your um, power settings, your fan settings and drum settings uh, and at any point uh, that those are triggered over time base, it'll um, repeat all of those actions. Um, so you can automate your roast accordingly. And so the best thing is, is so if you want to download someone else's roast, um, and you can save it onto your, um, your roast uh, history 
you can use that as a playback function as well. Yeah. So you can learn from other people's roasts and see how it reacts to your, I guess, your brain. Yeah. yeah. You can override it at any point, which is great. How you know, accurate is that playback function? Um, well, so yesterday, I, obviously I, um, dependent on yeah, the coffee you put I think in it's, there. Yeah, depending on the coffee, on the on the environment. Um, this one's tracking pretty well um, yeah. from yesterday. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty repeatable. So. Yeah. Can you run us through some of the specs? What's going on yeah, in sure. the roast? Um, so right now, I've got I've got all um, all the data on here, which is um, we've got. So there's two different probes on the on the alien. Well, it's two different probes, two different temperature regions, I should say. Yeah. Uh, there's a traditional bean probe uh, on the front plate. And then the, the coolest thing about the Alia, or what kind of sets it apart, is the infrared sensor. So there's... Um, the IBTS? The IBTS, so not the IBS. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of located be behind the front panel, and how that is different is um, it's, it's reading the temperature of the bean surface. So it's not reading an environment like the traditional bean probe. It's actually reading the, uh, the temperature of the bean in a live setting and it's feeding it back to and it's not a probe no not a probe it's, a, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's if there's probe. no yeah so it's like you know throughout covid everyone was reading our temperature on the forehead it's the yeah, same, same, it's same system same principle uh if there's no beans in there it reads the drum drum surface so yep. um there's a there's an algorithm that they've developed that uh gets rid of the uh the noise of, yep. uh, of the fans or the fins that are in there. Yes. Um, so it, 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 uh, it knows not to um, sort of take that into equation. Sure. Um, but yeah, it, it's able to read the surface of the beans um, at a, you know, and have a, a real-time feedback rather with any sort of lag that you might get with a bean probe. Yeah. Um, and the, the funny thing is like um, there's a bit of talk around first crack and sometimes you get a bit of a spike around first crack traditionally depending yep. on and a lot of people try to mitigate that. Um, what you sort of find is with the um, with the infrared, it doesn't detect that because it's reading the bean surface. Yeah. It's not reading an environmental spike of, uh, of temperature. So yeah, wow. you, you, if you have um, both rate of rises on, you get a, you can get a rate of rise of the infrared sensor and a rate yeah. of rise of yeah, the bean Yeah, they vary, probe. don't they? And then yeah. you vary around first crack. You might see the bean probe get a spike around first crack, but the infrared uh, stays smooth, a, almost like so, roast curving, isn't it? Yeah, like roast so, smoothing. You know, there's a bit of a you know, <laughs> yeah. is, it, is it what it is? You know. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting in that sense. So, but there's a there's a heck of a lot of data on here. Um, to be able to record, you can record. Uh, I mean, it's got bean management, yep. so you can load all your inventory on here like you would, and yeah, it will draw down. Track your stock. Exactly. Right? Yep, it's great for bean. Yeah, you know, if you're using it as a sample rose or if you're using it as a bit more of a commercial kind of sense or like a small business, yep. then you can track all of that. Um, yeah, definitely. And that's so, the cool thing. And you can develop um, profiles, roast profiles from scratch. Yes. There's a, there's a way to create recipes based on um, temperature or time yep. uh, and trigger points. Yep. So, you know, if, if the temperature is less than this degree, you can have, add all these different uh, trigger points. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, there's, a, there's quite a lot of possibilities with the software. So we're um, probably halfway, three quarters of the way through the roast, right? And what are we seeing on the screen? Where have you got your, your stages set up to be? And how would you control those? Or how would you edit those if you needed to? Uh, so what I've got, um, I suppose, well, what we're seeing here is uh, I've got two different, I've got all, all the readings on here, basically. So I've got the, the traditional bean, bean probe, and then we've got the I, uh, IBTS reading uh, in both. Um, so you can see the difference between the two. Yeah, there's about a 30 degree difference. I don't know if it's a, like a calibration thing on the bean probe, but traditionally, um, uh, you know, the, the bean the bean probe, you get the uh, nice Nike swoosh kind of. Yeah, curve. It, it does. It does lag, but you also yeah. have you know thickness of the metal to take into account, things like that, the length or type of the metal. It, it's it's going to be different for sure. But as far as stages, um, there's also a new kind of feature that they've added on the new software um, where you can you can customize uh, your uh, green phase, your your drying middle phase, and then the the end phase. 
Yeah. Um, so you can sort of see like a bit of a colour in the background, and you can sort of customise uh, those phases. So it sounds like you're going through crack. Going crack. So you've marked the first crack on yeah, there. Yeah. So we we can have all the all the phases marked here. I can um, hear that from here. Yeah. It's cool. Um, so it's really cool to be able to track all of that. If you if you um, start it too early, you can uncheck um, the boxes, which is really neat. You yep. can you can post edit that. So if you if you caught it too late, you can go, go and post edit um, and edit the profile and say no, I was probably about five seconds too late on, it, on hitting first crack, or I was too early, or whatever. Yeah. You can go and edit those posts. Um, and the other cool thing is, uh, yeah, post um, profile editing. You can you can fill in all the um, the features of a, of the bean as far as you know, where you got it, any sort of moisture and density levels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, room humidity. Yeah, room humidity. Um, so this a, is a safeguard, right? This is a little safe, safety. Uh, I think it was uh, one of the one of the guys from your team sort of, sort of coined the phrase. It's like the Netflix. Are you still watching? Are you still watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, just to get out all those things, uh, any sort of um, weight loss mm -hmm. will be um, calculated. I love that it does those calculations for you. Like yeah. even here, the time since first crack, the development yeah. time, the time since second crack, oh, the yeah. development time ratio. It's all of that data is, is there on the screen. You don't have to go searching for anything. It's really um, it's super user friendly. Yeah. It's, it, there's a few buttons on the screen. You can control this roaster via the software or yeah. via the, the interface on the front of the machine. Well that's the cool thing is, um, you know, there's, there's as much there as you want to be able to use. Like, I, I don't think there's anything really there that I'm going, mm, I don't, they haven't developed that yet or it's not in the software yet. They've thought of everything. Yeah, it's definitely there. And that, yeah, like you said, you know, if you want to do away with the software, if you're a bit more of a, uh, a roaster that's, um, I guess, old school or a bit more sensory, you can, you can do away with the software and, and you can mark first crack on the, on the front panel and it's got all the data as far as temperature reading and everything. Speaking of, uh, yeah, do you want to do the honours, Jimmy, and drop that roast before we go into yeah. second crack there? And oh, you'll end up the, having uh, to serve that coffee me. over there. <laughs> you just hit the PRS button here and then pull the handle. Pull the black handle up. There we go. Ta-da! So that was the playback feature, so that was all automated for us, which is really cool. Now, the screen's changed. We've gone into cooling mode, right? Yeah. So, fan yeah. starts yeah, in the, so the in cooling the fan. The cooling fan starts operating, the drum slows down, obviously, um, to uh, allow for the beans to not fly out everywhere. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Now, now is the time that if you needed to go back and fill in any data or parameters, change anything, you could do that. Exactly. And really, by the time you've finished doing that, these are almost cool enough to pick up. Like exactly. the fan is it's super, super powerful. efficient. It like this, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, it takes a bit longer if you're doing a kilo. Yes. Um, you may want to agitate a little. Um, the other cool feature is when you're in cooling mode, uh, from from this uh, section, you can press the uh, there's an F1 button here. It'll display uh, back on on the display. And that allows you to then um, preheat the roaster at the same time as the cooling trays going. You got so back to back so you can roast. do back-to-back -back roasting. Um, depending on your batch size, again, most of the time your, your beans are probably going to be cooled before the roast is ready. So oh, for sure. That, that's how quick it is. Yeah, cool. yeah, they're cool enough to pick up now. That's yeah. And so from here, like if you know, if uh, if your preheat might might have been too high for that um, that roast, or you want to make any changes, you can. Select your preheat um, again. Yeah, change your, your charge temperature. Yeah, sure. So it's it's, it's all there really. There's, there's a lot of more features for you know, I guess for commercial roasters that you know are used to those kind of functions and features. Yeah. Those features are there, and then you know, home enthusiasts. It's, it's so much there to learn. Super friendly to all yeah. all market. It caters to a lot of different people. It's there, for sure. Yeah. What do you think, Jimmy? It's certainly been an asset to, for us. I think just we love the opportunity to just play with things. We'll get smaller batches. People will give us green and we get to try it. Now we can experiment more, cupping more regularly with yeah. smaller batches, getting the best out of Origins without any, like, so to be wastage over time, like not having to do bigger, bigger roasts to really get the profiles that we want out of the coffee. So 
I know from me, so like I work in the cafe sort of thing, so obviously the coffee's in the bag by the time I get to it. So um, it's it's helping me talk about our singles. Um, we know what we're looking for in the coffee, and we've had the opportunity to to really play at this point. Yeah. Much faster, much more responsive. Like our our turnaround time on on actually being able to get some good coffee, taste it, and develop it, and then put it into as a product line is it's reduced that time for us. So from a productive pro yeah, wasted massive. So cost wise. Um, and it was like affordability on something that has such a big impact on the big picture of the business, for sure. So it's been like, we all know over COVID, we've all like had to, the, the green world has been really challenging for the last few years. So to, for us to be able to have that um, flexibility to quickly adapt if we needed to change an origin or something and know that we can get the best out of it, it's been a real asset. So um, appreciate your time, man. That's, very helpful. If anyone wants more information, um, you can go to artistic.com.au. Yep. We'll connect you to the right people. There's pricing online. Very, um, it's a it's a very affordable option for, like, say, a home enthusiast or uh, a roasting company. So, appreciate your time. Thank hey, you. Thank you, guys. And Thanks, guys. enjoy the rest of the mice. Yeah. We'll surely see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Check it out, uh, Espresso Company Australia and the Audio Bullet online. And if you haven't, subscribe to the channel, like this video and hit the bell icon. Thanks guys. Cheers. Thanks.